on today's video, I'd like to address the most popular question I get. This comes from free to play players, low spenders, medium spenders, big spenders, old players, new players, weak, weaker players, stronger players. Every kind of player in this game has asked this question at least once before, which legendary commander I should work on next. This video will touch point on every tier, which legendary commander you should work on in my working theory on how I am going to progress through the legendary commanders in the game. So if you guys are doubting your strategy or don't know where to go next, this video is for you. So as always, sit back, enjoy the video, don't forget to slap a like on it and subscribe to the channel. Hey there YouTube, welcome back to Gecko Gaming. So many people asked me this same exact question and one that I had to deal with quite a bit myself. Which legendary commander am I gonna work on next? The game's been out for quite some time. The amounts of legendary commanders are through the roof and it's growing, the, that number is growing with every month again and again and again. Every couple of months we get two new legendary commanders. It's been crazy and truthfully, it's not easy to know what to work on. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start with a free to play player because that is the quickest, easiest answer I have in this video. A free to play player more often than not spends a good eight months trying to max out one legendary commander. It is rough. I understand you guys. It is super tough. And this is why this answer is pretty easy for me to answer because more often than not, most of you don't have two legendary commanders maxed out yet. And so easy peasy to answer. The two major commanders in this game that to this day, they've been here from the beginning and to this day, they are insanely relevant are Yi Song Ye, and Richard the first. If you started doing Richard first and Yi Song Ye second, not the worst thing you could have done. It's absolutely fine. You're still in a great shape. But if you started with a Yi Song Ye first and then went to Richard the first, that's maybe a better bang. That's probably a better bang for your buck. I usually used to think that Richard comes should come first. As of late, I have changed that opinion because honestly, a maxed out Yi Song Ye, especially for a free to play player that's willing to grind, this AOE is massive. It's awesome for fighting, it's awesome for barbarians, it's awesome for Ark of Osiris, it's super useful overall. So, just like Richard's tankiness and healing is super relevant almost everywhere, Yi Song Ye might, might give you a better bang for your buck just because you can barbarian chain and therefore get more resources, speed ups, gems, and all that good stuff. So, Free to play players, my opinion, as of right now, you should be working on Yi Song Ye first and Richard the first second. Remember, the first three wheels in a kingdom are Richard the first, so you should be getting on day 33, day 60, and I believe day 94 of your kingdom. You should be getting three Richard wheels or three wheels. And then after that, I think on day 120 of a kingdom, another wheel pops up and that is the Yi Song Ye wheel. So make sure you're spinning as much as you can on Yi Song Ye. Unlock Richard. Never, don't, never leave a commander not unlocked. Even if you're a free-to-play player, having them in your arsenal is better than not having them. And at the same time, if you're truly not gonna work on them, you can keep them unsummoned. So if you ever decide you want to spend a few bucks on the game, Rider of History will remain available. So do not summon a commander that you don't need, but definitely keep them in the backlog, in case you ever decide to spend some money into that account, you can buy Rider of History. Now, medium players and low spenders have actually a tougher time here because the decision you make will impact your game for a few months and it can be really detrimental. I wanna give you guys my working theory when it comes to which commanders I'm working on. And for this, we need to talk a little bit about theorycraft. Rise of Kingdoms have proven that the way they're gonna work is two legendary commanders every few months to shift the meta around. So ide ideally, initially while the game was new, there was more cavalry commanders. There was much more cavalry presence. The meta was fully cavalry. After a few things happened along the way, we started seeing a shift into infantry. 
there was a lot of talks about infantry that counter cavalry being a big deal being the big player and very very quickly we saw a, a change in the trend where especially after someone like Alexander I and Constantine came out, before that we had Saladin and Genghis Khan who even more reinforced that cavalry mentality. But the way this is, seems to be working is cavalry, infantry, archers, and then back to cavalry. Right now with the with Attila and Shinjen coming uh, with Attila and Shinjen coming out in the next few days we have our first mightiest governor which by the way this changed all of a sudden this morning so apparently Attila comes out now and not next mightiest governor but anyway with Attila and Shinjen Takeda Shinjen coming out we're back to shifting the the meta from very very heavy range for attack and infantry for defense to more of cavalry and range and infantry taking the back seat and I'm assuming that when the new ca commanders that come out for infantry come out, the shift will happen. You need to invest in the commanders that, are, that have longevity. And for that, you cannot make a decision too early. What I mean by that is this. When the meta started for cavalry, Genghis Khan and Saladin were the new guys. Genghis Khan proved himself to be so, 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 so strong and so good that the meta of cavalry dictates that Genghis Khan is probably the most used commander nowadays because of his massive, massive damage. And of course, some insane skills for cavalry only. Skill damage bonus increases, damage bonus increases, so forth and so on. Saladin, who is very underrated, took a little bit of a backseat, but he's still super useful. But in this whole period, Genghis Khan won that war. The same can be said about the shift to infantry next. Alexander the Great definitely took the cake against Constantine, and Alexander the Great found a lot more use on the field than Constantine did, even with people who had them both maxed out. And so forth and so on. The same thing is happening now with, Cap with, uh, in with range. Edward is finding himself a lot more usage than Tamaris is. It's kind of a weird thing. The wheel commanders seem to be the stronger ones. They are the stronger ones, and they are ones that potentially have longevity. What I recommend to you guys when it comes to maxing your next legendary commander is wait. Because there's going to be someone, if you're not a big spender, if you're a low spender, medium spender, wait. Let the big boys try them out. See how the meta shifts. See how these commanders get used, and start working on commanders that will have longevity. What does longevity mean? It means that once the cycle goes around back to the, the, the same type of commander, the next ones that come out should not overshadow the ones you've maxed out. Or they should either combine in a certain way with them, as well as if they do overshadow, you really want to try to live through two cycles, which will be about probably a, not even a year, but something like eight months. An example here is if you maxed Yi song -ye, if you maxed out Richard, and if you maxed out Minamoto, you had the three commanders that really found themselves the most success in the game. The problem was, you know, maxing him requires money, so most people worked on Cao Cao. Fantastic. When, Const when Alexander, not, not Alexander, Saladin and Genghis Khan came out, Genghis Khan found a lot of relevance both to Cao Cao and to, uh, to um, Minamoto. But Saladin really got out of it. He's not really that more that used, even though he should be. Cao Cao survived two full cycles. And now with Xin Zhen coming out, I believe we're going to see a little bit less of Cao Cao's on the battlefield. We'll see him more for movement. But even then, I think that we're going to start seeing the phasing out of Cao Cao. The same can be said about range. I see Yi song -ye surviving a full cycle. After this new Edward Tamaris situation, Yi song -ye still rules supreme. He's being used with an Edward rather than with than Edward Tamaris or rather than Edward El Cid or rather than he is still so relevant that he applies to one more cycle. How you should pick your next commander is based on the feedback you get from the big boys. 
And that way you can know which commander you should max out and you'll be able to enjoy him and it will be very relevant for at least two full cycles. Can you max out one of two legendary commanders every time they come out? As a medium spender, probably. As a low spender, it'll be a little hard. But if you are anywhere between medium and, and high level, you should be able to quite comfortably, level of spending I mean, quite comfortably max out one legendary commander in three-ish months, which will give you time to let the meta play itself out, figure out which commander is the better one of the two, you unlock them both because you're buying Rider of History. Then you pick the one that has longevity based on receipts, based on seeing him on the field. That's why me, right now, I am very, very, very much holding on to Commander Sculptures. I have 526 of them available, and the one commander that I will be maxing out will be Edward I. I see Edward I, Edward of Woodstock. I believe Edward of Woodstock will have longevity in terms of rally. So perhaps I'll get to lead some rallies. Is, was Tamaris a better choice? Maybe. Maybe not. I'll never find out. But what I did find out is based on the feedback of the big guys, they said Edward is very useful and Tamaris is a little bit less. And therefore, I went with him. Which one of the two Cav commanders am I going to go with? My personal thing is I am probably going to skip the cavalry scene altogether. Why? Because unfortunately, I did skip the cavalry scene previously. And I'm missing a relevant cavalry commander. To make up for that, and to make sure I can in the future be relevant to newer metas, I will most likely focus my next, um, my next time on anything on an infantry commander because I know for a fact that Richard I, who is a maxed out commander that I have, as well as Charles Martel, will play a good part in what the new commander will be. It'll probably be a good pairing with Richard the First. And so from there on out, I will work on one of two commanders with every meta shift to be able to keep up with things. And if you do it that way, you'll be able to very quickly use up something like I have, stock up a good amount of legendary commander sculptures, and then get that commander out to level 60, 5-5, five, five, maybe 3, 5-5-2, five, 5-5-4, five, 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 maybe a 5-5-5, five, 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 that would be cool. And then work out on the expertise. But while you do that, that commander is relevant because he's strong enough to carry his weight. Plus, you can get him to level 60. If you can get him to level 60, have him a 5-5-5-1 five, 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 and work on those 310 sculptures at the end later, fantastic. That's That was the case with Edward for me. Edward made it to 555, insta level 60, and I've been working on this for a little while now. So the answer to which legendary commander you should work on next is wait. See how the meta plays out, see how the battlefield looks like, and then make a decision that will be a longevity decision that you'll enjoy that commander for months to come. I'm very much looking forward for Lost Kingdom because I believe I'll get a lot of use out of my Edward. If it's not to rally, and help out in JWM, I'll hop to a sub-alliance that needs help and rally with that. I'll send him on the open field, I'll send him anywhere that he needs to be sent, and I'll find better use of him, in my, from my understanding, than Tamaris will. And again, if you were someone who maxed out Genghis Khan or Alexander, you're still seeing that part of the meta, where again, Genghis Khan stays relevant for one more cycle, at least, even though both Attila and Shinjen look great. And the next commanders that will come out, legendary commanders, will be infantry. Those guys will test whether or not Alexander survives the meta shift. I believe Alexander will. And I believe Constantine will as well. But again, people will focus more on Alexander the Great than Constantine. And most likely what we'll see is slowly and steadily these things happening more and more. I am going to start keeping up with the new meta as it comes with one legendary at a time and hope that from there on out, I'll be able to use the one legendary for two full cycles. And then if he becomes irrelevant, I still enjoyed a good six months with it more, probably like eight or nine months with him. 
So keep that in mind when you pick your next legendary commander. Wait, don't worry about having a lot of legendary sculptures not being used. It's better for you to make a good decision based on receipts, based on proof, than making up a decision in your head that Attila is better than Shinjen or Shinjen is better than Attila, putting all your eggs in the one basket early on and finding out you made a huge mistake. You definitely don't want to do that. And I'll give you guys a great example to why, to why I say this. I realized very quickly that the meta shift is going to be infantry. So way, way, way back then. So my brain said max out Charles Martel. He was the only infantry commander left. I put a lot of legendary commanders into him, sculptures. And that was a huge mistake because I was trying to keep up with the old meta rather than waiting for the new one. Do not wait, do not keep up with the old meta. Wait for the new one, pick one of the two that'll have longevity and max that one out. That is my suggestion when it comes to maxing legendary commanders out. How do you guys approach your legendary commander maxing? Let me know in the comments down below. I'm really curious to know how you guys approach these things, how you guys think about these kinds of things. And of course, thank you very much for all your continuous support. I'm Gecko, I'm out of here. I hope we hit 220K subscribers today. That's insane. I can't believe we're about to hit 20K subscribers. That's so cool. Thank you guys very much for all the kindness, the love, the support, the subscriptions, the likes, the comments, the Discord follows, the tweets, the Instagram messages. You guys are unbelievable. Thank you very much for all your support and kindness. I'll see you guys sooner rather than later. Take care. Peace.